David Saint Jacques. Uh, unfortunately, I have not personally met him. I I, I know of him a great deal. I, I've heard a lot about uh, from uh, from Dave Williams about David. Uh, David is uh, one of our new breed of uh, Canadian astronauts. As you know, we've had some very accomplished astronauts, many of whom have retired or are retired in the last few years. Um, average age of our Canadian astronauts were creeping well over 50, and so there was a need for, for new uh, 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 blood into the system. And David uh, was selected in May of 2009, uh, by the Canadian Space Agency uh, to be one of the 14 members of the 20th uh, NASA astronaut class. Canada has been really very fortunate at very high quality astronauts that we have had. Each of one of our astronauts at this point have completed at least one, most of them two, some hopefully three uh, space missions, which is very different to the tradition, the, the standard NASA astronauts. Uh, in 2011, David uh, graduated from the astronaut uh, candidate training uh, that included uh, uh, scientific and technical briefings, intensive instructions in the International Space Station, uh, extravehicle activity, robotics, physiological training, T-38 flight training, Russian language, and that's unfortunately an essential part of astronaut training nowadays because, as you know, the only way to get to the space station right now is Soyuz, and the way back is for Soyuz, so the Kenyan astronauts actually have to develop Russian language skills, which is great, wonderful, um, and, and uh, survival training. Since graduation, he's been assigned to the robotics branch of the astronaut's office. In October, he participated in a, a NEMO 15 mission. Uh, I've been a scientific director of two NEMO missions, NEMO uh, 7 and 9. I was involved in NEMO 12, uh, and I'm look for, looking forward to hopefully potentially having future uh, missions with, uh, with David at, once our systems are fully uh, tested and operational. David, can you hear me? We don't have any sound. Oh, we can hear you, David. Good morning. Well, I know it's, it's probably good evening for you there. Loud and clear. How are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Podium is yours. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anvari. It's a pleasure to be with you today, uh, virtually at least. I'm calling in from uh, Moscow in Russia where I'm currently uh, training and also supporting the next launch. Uh, and uh, I've never been to Muskoka, though I've been close once, uh, a couple of times actually, I had the chance to go uh, on a couple of uh, canoeing expeditions in Algonquin. So maybe one day i uh, have a chance to go on a trip on the beautiful lakes uh, near a conference center. Today I'll just talk uh, briefly between all of this, a kind of a passion for understanding, I guess. Uh, Mike, uh, next slide, please. Hello, I cannot see you. Okay. Okay, I can't see you, but I can hear you. All right, we. Uh, this is uh, the video of the launch of Dr. Thirsk. We're in Kazakhstan, in the desert. Watch this ride.
the astronauts on board are busy monitoring all their systems. And you'll notice in the next shot where we see them inside how tightly strapped in they are. Notice that the, the commander can't even touch the buttons with his hands. He has to use some kind of an extension finger. You'll also notice really well. kind of a puppet dangling from a rope. All know, That's their only it. indication where, when to, as to when they reach weightlessness. So use capsule showing Canadian Space Agency astronaut Bob Thirsk on the left and Russian cosmonaut and Soyuz commander Roman Romanenko on the right. Out of view, European Space Agency astronaut Frank Duena. Of course, for a rookie astronaut like me, this is still many years in the future. Thank you for the slide. This is a dream that started when I was very young. Uh, for as long as I can remember, I remember this photo. I don't know when I saw it. It really impressed me as a little boy. It is, of course, a photo of the Earth seen from the moon. And a, a child can understand that the moon is far away. It's obvious. We can see it. And this vision of the Earth uh, seen from so far away was, uh, I think, very important in making me who I am. Probably uh, in encouraging me to be curious and adventurous. It is paradoxical in a way that we take all this trouble to go to space only to look back at Earth. I guess the same process everybody goes through in their life. You leave your home so you can know it better. So I had this dream, and it, but it was like everybody, a little boy, perhaps. But uh, for me, it was pretty strong. Next slide, please. You see me here uh, on the left of the screen, uh, obviously flying a spacecraft, uh, while my little brother is uh, busy talking to uh, galactic uh, uh, radio control. So I had dreams like everybody else. Of course, eventually I became a bit wiser and thought, well, being an astronaut would be nice, of course, but what are the odds? So I pursued some, uh, something else. Next slide, please. I was interested in the physical world very much. I uh, became an engineer um, and uh, eventually turned my attention to science and became an astrophysicist, and which uh, kind of quenched my thirst for understanding the world in a way. Next slide, please. Also gave me a chance to travel a lot. Uh, I had the chance to work in Hawaii at the, one of the world's best observatories. The, the two telescopes in the forefront here are partially owned and operated by Canada. Uh, this was a great experience of uh, teamwork and resourcefulness uh, because you know, you're far from your lab when you're there trying to make these experiments work. Next slide, please. And then uh, one thing led to another, and I became a family doctor. And uh, I decided to go work up uh, in the Canadian Arctic, where you see that the yellow star in Povornetuk, in uh, northern Quebec, which was a great experience again, and this time uh, again of traveling, of resourcefulness, and uh, a good way to understand a bit more uh, about humanity. Next slide, please. <laughs> 